Hey guys, I just wanted to show you a little bit here. What I'm doing is um, I am winterizing my car, which basically means just flush the cooling system, run some uh, system flush through it, and uh, replace the coolant with new coolant, clean out my overflow. And I just thought I'd give you a little bit of idea how I do this. Okay, so what I do is I take the top radiator hose off. You'll see that there. And I take the thermostat out. And then I put this down here like that. And then I put my garden hose in there in the uh, opening for the thermostat along with my compressed air nozzle. I almost forgot to mention that I wrap a wet rag or wet towel around those ho around the garden hose and around the air nozzle and then I hold it down to the intake with both of them inserted in the thermostat hole. Anyway, on with the video. And then uh, I turn the hose on about medium and wait for water to start coming out of um, you know up around the, the uh, thermostat area there. And then uh, what I do is I hit it with a blast of air. Do you have to be a little careful not to give it too much pressure? You know, 40, 50 pounds is okay. Uh, just kind of go easy with it. Don't try to shock the system too much with uh, instant on and off of your airline. You want to just ease into it and build up a little bit. So it, what happens is it blows junk out of that hose and it'll blow that straight down here in the opening somewhere. Um, and then once the, I get it uh, coming out clean, then I pull my, uh, my heater hose from right here. This is, the, um, this is the return line for the heater hose. And I blow a little water back through this with air. Um, that back flushes my heater core out and cleans that out. And another thing I'd like to mention here, while I'm at it, a big old sheet covering the whole front and it keeps me from getting my shoes and pants splattered. Uh, another thing I'd like to mention here is I see a lot of people complaining about trying to burp the system once they're refilling it and everything. But if you take a look at this thermostat right here, you'll, right at the top, the 12 o'clock position, you'll see an eighth inch hole right there. I always drill my thermostats like that. And the reason I do it is because when I'm filling it back up with coolant, that burps out the air. I don't have to jack up the front of the car or start it and shut it off or have it um, blow out coolant because it got hot before the thermostat opened. Um, it gets out the air bubbles and stuff like that. Once it's all back together, a little bit of RPM, you know, like uh, 12 to 1500 RPM or so, for 30 seconds or 45 seconds, will circulate out the air bubbles and they'll come out through that and just release up into the radiator. So that's how I go about making sure I don't get uh, back blasts out of the cooling system before it's full of coolant. And uh, if you'll notice, I have an older thermostat here and at the same 12 o'clock position, you'll see a little brass button there. Well, that kind of fits loose in that hole and that's actually the same thing, same idea. They used to do that on a lot of the um, um, thermostats, but they just don't seem to do it anymore. I guess it's cheaply building them or something. But anyway, that's what that's for. And that's a factory vent right there. So if you don't have a factory vent, just drill an eighth inch hole in your thermostat right about the place I showed you on this one. Of course, you want to be inside your housing and everything. So just right next to the spring area right there is fine. All right. Okay. And another thing I see is I see people try to figure out how to seal these thermostat housings and they file them and they mess with them and they use two gaskets and, and all that stuff. I use nothing but plain silicone and I just want to make sure that it's all around the outside edge of that, of that uh, ridge right there.
where the uh, where the thermostat goes in and what I do is I put a little bit of silicone around the inside of that put the thermostat in it and let it sit like this for a while until it dries that way it holds it in there when I go to put it all together then when I put it in I uh, just put silicone all the way around that outer rim right there and put it on and tighten it down and I never have leaks never all right Anyway, on with the project here. Okay, I like to use this Prestone flush and cleaner, and I use two bottles. The directions say uh, if the cooling system is over 12 quarts to use two bottles. Well, we're running about that, so I go ahead and use two bottles anyway. And what I do now is I start pouring this into the cooling system. Once both bottles are in, then I fill it all the way back up with water. And um, in this case, I usually run it. It says in the instructions you can run it for a couple days of daily driving. And then drain, rinse, and refill with antifreeze and water to a 50-50 mix. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, now, what I do when I'm putting this back together while that thermostat and rtv red is setting up in there uh, i know a lot of people use right stuff and all that but i've used the high temp red rtv pretty much my entire mechanical life which is a few decades at least and uh, stuff works great it seals anything and it sets up really nice and tough i would imagine probably a lot like the uh the um right stuff does so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start putting things back together and I've already brushed in, with a bottle brush cleaned out my overflow tank which is right there and trimmed the end of the hose so that I have a nice tight fit if you don't have a tight fit on this your recovery system is not going to work because it'll just leak air there and introduce air back into the system so you want to make sure that's tight so you'll have to either cut it back to a new section of the hose like I just did or um, you'll have to replace that hose and the recovery tank like I said is all cleaned out already and it's plumbed in to the bottom the hose comes down here and goes behind all this and enters the bottom of the tank down there I don't think you can see it but anyway this is a thermos and it's a shotgun shell thermos the lid looks like the back of a shotgun shell um, and what I did was I oh, I drilled right inside here you'll see right in there that hole that's to vent air and stuff like that in case it needs to vent which they do when it starts filling up with coolant it needs to vent that somewhere so I drilled it so that it vents down between the um, layers of the metal and vents out from out from the bottom down here and it just runs down there okay anyway my cleaner is in there and I'm letting the thermostat set up a little bit it's probably fine now it's been about 10 minutes and uh, I put everything together wet as far as sealant on there and I don't let it sit I never have I put it together wet and by the time it's filled up with coolant and running and warmed up and everything it's sealed that's it nothing to mess with after that all right i'm going to get on with putting this back together and i'll be back in a minute and show you the rtv part okay now you'll notice how i did the rtv basically right on the line of the thermostat and the housing uh, just a thin bead not even an eighth inch thick uh, when you put this on it may squeeze out a little and best thing is to just let it dry let's set up on there and let it let it sit there where it's squeezed out and, and then I trim it off and and might brush it off later All right. Well, here we go putting it on and I will be back in a few minutes Okay, well in the process of doing all this um, I decided to fix something that's always kind of bugged me. There's two sets of holes for the flange for the thermostat housing right there You'll see the two uh, spots that are JB welded. I uh, cleaned those out real good and blew them out. 
and I filled those extra holes with JB weld and then as soon as um, it starts setting up a little bit I'm going to razor blade it off flat and then that'll take care of that no more extra holes all right thanks okay this is what I was talking about you can see a little bit of the silicone squeezed out right there around the edge I'm just going to leave it there until it sets up then it's really easy to trim off all right well I'm going to continue with the filling of the system get it all closed up and drive it for a few days thanks for watching guys have a good day be safe out there bye morning and as I mentioned before uh, some silicone will usually squeeze out you can see it right there and I'm going to show you how I deal with that I'll take a razor knife like this and I trim right along that seam right there Try to get it from this direction. And then some, a lot of times I'll just use the blade edge to see if I can push some of that silicone off like that. And I just get the larger chunks. Just use a fingernail and go along there and get the excess off. And then after I do that, I go along it with a bronze wire brush like this. I just brush the seam real good and you can see how that works. going like that and it's all nice and clean and I'll be back in a minute with the finish and there we go proof that you don't need a gasket and that RTV will seal even when wet this engine's been run two or three times up to the temperature that the fans come on which is uh, 210 so I know there's no leaks and it's all set to go all right thanks guys see you later